Welcome to my YouTube channel. Learn at ease. In this video I will discuss a topic in biochemistry. Where I will explain the concepts of Weak acid as buffers, henderson hasselbalch equation, and Biological buffers. Now, I will introduce you to Weak acid and conjugate bases. Substances with only a slight tendency to dissociate to form ions in solution are called weak electrolytes. Acetic acid, CH3COOH, is a good example. The reaction for dissociation of CH3COOH in water is shown, which is a weak acid. CH3COOH when added in water, does not completely dissociate. And only minor fraction of CH3COOH is dissociated. This dissociated ions are CH3COO- and H+. The acid dissociation constant, known as Ka, for acetic acid is 1.74 into 10 raised to minus 5. Which is explained by the means of equation mentioned here. The equation is the standard equation to measure Ka that is, dissociation constant for any acid. So, this value of Ka that is, 1.74 into 10 raised to minus 5, is the fraction of CH3COOH dissociated. Again the reaction for dissociation of CH3COOH, in water is shown. And the concentrations of CH3COO- H plus and undissociated CH3COOH in placed in the equation to get the value of Ka for CH3COOH. Which is 1.74 into 10 raised to minus 5. Ka is also called an ionization constant because it states the extent to which a substance forms ions in water. The relatively low value of Ka for acetic acid reveals that an ionized form, CH3COOH, predominates over H plus and CH3COO- in aqueous solutions of acetic acid. Viewed another way, CH3COO- the acetate ion, has a high affinity for H+. Once the concept of weak acid and its dissociation is well understood by you, I will now explain, titration curve of weak acid. Titration is the analytical method used to determine the amount of acid in a solution. Titration curve of acetic acid, CH3COOH is shown in the image on the left. For the titration curve on the left, Initial pH of acetic acid solution is 1, as partial dissociation of CH3COOH releases H plus ions in the solution making the pH acidic. Carefully see the titration by pausing the video before I start to provide you with its explanation. As the titration begins, mostly CH3COOH is present, in undissociated form. On addition of NaOH solution, its, hydroxide ions, OH- forces CH3COOH to dissociate. The equation of dissociation is shown here. Where CH3COOH is dissociated to CH3COO- ions and H+ ions. This OH- ions of NaOH will neutralize H+ ions of CH3COOH. So now more CH3COOH will dissociate to give H plus ions and CH3COO minus ions. When further NaOH is added, the pH gradually increases. As CH3COO minus ions accumulates, at the expense of diminishing CH3COOH along with the neutralization of H plus ions. At the point where half of the CH3COOH is neutralized, that is, when 0.5 equivalent of OH- ions are added. Now carefully see the titration curve on the left. Transparent yellow square spot appearing on the curve, is the midpoint of the titration curve, that is when pH equals pKa, exactly 50% of CH3COOH is dissociated. At this point when pH equals pKa, the CH3COOH and CH3CO ominous ions resists the change in pH. This point where pH equals pKa, CH3COOH, which is a weak acid, shows optimum buffering action, that resists the change in pH. For the titration curve, buffering region is the value ranging from plus 1 to minus 1 from the pKa value of a particular weak acid. 
Now after understanding the titration curve of weak acids, titrations curves of different weak acid is shown here. Now it should be remembered that, different weak acids have different range of buffering ability. Which is, based on characteristic pKa value of individual weak acid. Ammonium ion, NH4, has pKa value 9.25. Dihydrogen phosphate, H2PO4, has pKa value 6.86, and acetic acid, CH3COOH as mentioned earlier, has pKa value 4.76. pKa values of all these three weak acids is described in the image on the left. Different weak acids have different pKa values, thus they show buffering activity in different pH range. Now let me show you the unique titration curve for weak acids that has more than one H plus ions that can dissociate. Here the titration curve of H3PO4, phosphoric acid is shown, where it has three pKa values. Initially H3PO4, loses its first proton and gets converted to H2PO4 minus, and where its first pKa value is shown with an arrow. Then H2PO4 minus, loses its second proton and gets converted to HPO4 minus 2, and where its second pKa value is shown with an arrow. Lastly, HPO4 minus 2, loses its third proton and gets converted to PO4 minus 3, and where its third pKa value is shown with an arrow. Thus, H3PO4 has three dissociable H plus ions, and so it has three pKa values. And on titrating H3PO4 it loses proton 1 by 1 and gets converted to PO4-3. Now let me explain you, the henderson hassel balch equation. Consider the ionization of some weak acid, HA, occurring with an acid dissociation constant, Ka. Reaction of weak acid dissociation is shown here. Following the reaction. Equation to determine Ka. Ionization constant is shown. Where H plus and A minus are the concentration of weak acids dissociated ions and HA is the concentration of undissociated weak acid. Rearranging this expression in terms of the parameter of interest, concentration of H plus ions, we have following equation. Now, by multiplying negative log on both the sides, we get following equation. Replacing minus log to the base 10 of H plus ion concentration we get following equation. The final equation we get, that is, pH equals pKa plus, log of ratios, of dissociated negative ion concentration to the concentration of undissociated weak acid, is known as, henderson hassel balch equation. Note, particularly when concentration of undissociated weak acid HA equals to, concentration of its negatively charged dissociated ion, pH equals to pKa. Again here there is representation of henderson hassel balch equation. Its importance can be mentioned as, by henderson hassel balch equation, pH of the solution can be determined for weak acid kith known pKa, if the ratios of concentration of its dissociated negative ion to the concentration of undissociated weak acid is known. Now let me explain the role of biological buffers in living systems. Weak acids or bases buffer cells and tissues. Such buffers are known as biological buffers. First, phosphate, HPO4-2, H2PO4-, buffer system. This system function at cytoplasm of all cells, intracellular. The intracellular pH of most cells is maintained in the range between 6.9 and 7.4. The phosphate buffer system is maximally effective at a pH close to its pKa of 6.86, thus tends to resist pH changes in the range between about 5.9 and 7.9. The reaction for dissociation of H2PO4- is shown. From the understanding of titration curve of phosphoric acid mentioned earlier in this video pKa of HPO4-2, H2PO4-, buffer system is 6.86. Second, histidine system. This system function at cytoplasm of all cells, thus, it is intracellular buffer. 
Histidine is one of the 20 naturally occurring amino acids commonly found in proteins. It possesses as part of its structure an imidazole group, a five-membered heterocyclic ring possessing two nitrogen atoms. The pKa for dissociation of the imidazole hydrogen of histidine is 6.04. Its concentration in free form is very low and found in the protein, it's secondary to phosphate buffer system. The reaction for dissociation of proton from histidine residue of protein is shown. pKa of histidine that operated at physiological pH is 6.04. Third bicarbonate buffer system of blood plasma. Extracellular fluid that bathes the cells and tissues of animals is maintained by the bicarbonate slash carbonic acid, HCO3 minus slash, H2CO3, system. The pK1 for H2CO3 at 25 degrees Celsius is 3.77, but at 37 degrees Celsius, pK1 is 3.57. At pH 7.4, the concentration of H2CO3 is a very small fraction of the HCO3 concentration. Reaction showing the dissociation of H2CO3 is shown and placing the values of HCO3- concentration and concentration of undissociated H2CO3 in henderson hassel balch equation, solving the equation, we get that concentration of HCO3- is 6761 times higher than H2CO3. Thus, CONC of HCO3- has to be 6761 times higher than H2CO3 to maintain pH of the blood. Yet, the bicarbonate buffer system works well because the critical concentration of H2CO3 is maintained relatively constant, through equilibrium with dissolved CO2 produced in the tissues and available as a gaseous CO2 reservoir in the lungs. The image shows the reaction that is catalyzed by the enzyme carbonic anhydrase. This enzyme, maintains high concentration of HCO3- and low concentration of H2CO3 in the intracellular fluids. References Leninger's Principles of Biochemistry, 5th edition Nelson & Cox Biochemistry, 5th edition Garrett & Grisham If you are new to my channel, please subscribe below. Thank you for watching my video. This video is prepared by Dr. Dwaypayan Goswami.